Hi, Sam. Hey y'all, my name is Nat. I hope you're having a terrific day today. And for this video, we are gonna be doing a TBR unhaul. All right, before I get into anything bookish, make sure to hit like and subscribe down below, as well as tell me in the comments, what is the last book that you got rid of without having read it? All right, so it's been a while since I did one of these. And while I am going to go through my digital TBR with y'all as well, I have my laptop down here. That's what I'm referencing when pointing down. I also thought it was high time I finally look through my physical TBR and make some tough decisions. I don't like unhauling books that I haven't read. I especially don't like unhauling books that I haven't read and I also spent my own money on. But I need to be ruthless. I need to work down this number a little bit. My own TBR really isn't that bad, but it could always be lower and that would make me feel better. <laughs> okay, so honestly, starting out with this first shelf that isn't my active TBR for the month. I I actually don't think I want to get rid of any of these. These are all books I like have gotten recently. I still have a solid interest in or were sent to me and I want to read. But yeah, I think this one's going to stay as is. I I keep going back on username Evie by Joe Sugg because it doesn't have terrible reviews, but it doesn't have great reviews. And like the art isn't anything exceptional to keep my attention, but I'm guessing probably like the biggest sell for this for a lot of people was the fact that Joe Sugg wrote it, who was like a big name YouTuber back in the day. Didn't really ever have any interest in him, but Josh bought this for me when I was having a bad day along with some other graphic novels. I don't, I don't know. Since it is a graphic novel, I think I'm gonna hold on to it just because that would be so easy to read. I could probably read this whole thing in like a single sitting. So I think I will hold on to it for now. This was recent. I do still wanna read this. This is an arc that I'm very much looking forward to. My friend Kat annotated. I do really wanna read this because this was a five star author. Ugh, spoiler alert by Olivia Dade. I tried to read this previously and as you can tell, had a few red flags, which is never a good sign in a romance book. I've gone back and forth about revisiting this one, namely because it does have so many positive reviews and the idea of this book is very up my alley, but I wasn't the biggest fan of how fandom culture was being presented. I also think part of that might have just been the mood I was in when reading it because I had just come off of reading a couple five stars that were like out of this world great romances. So when this one was just kind of meh to me, it like really made my dislike even more apparent, but I do still wanna try reading it. I actually still have my bookmark in there. No, you know, I'm gonna be ruthless. I think I'm gonna get rid of this one. I'm gonna take my bookmark out and put this on the end hall shelf. I also think I'm gonna officially give up on Tiny Pretty Things by Sonia Cheroprotra and Danielle Clayton. I talked about this in my Why Haven't I Read This Book Yet tag. It was one of the oldest books that was on my shelves for the longest time, and I still haven't read it. YA Contemporary, which is a genre that I don't really gravitate towards anymore, haven't since I was like 18. I initially picked it up because it was about dance, and I was a dancer in high school. I know about a lot of the politics that goes on there. I think it has a bit of a mysterious element to it, but I'm not really sure and it's already been turned into a TV show. I don't know It's like it's really chunky too for a YA contemporary So I think I think I'm gonna officially let this one go. Thankfully I got it like really really cheap a little bit more This far corner is historical fictions, which is very rare that I ever pick it up I do still have an interest in the boy in the red dress. It's a bit of a mystery bronze drum by Fong Nguyen this was up my alley because it's historical fiction, but I believe it's feminist, what with it being about these two sisters who are involved in a Vietnamese war. And it is actually based on a true story, which does sound super interesting to me, but it doesn't have great reviews. I think it's like a 3.3 something on Goodreads, which isn't terrible, but it's not great either. I don't know, I just like haven't felt a need to pick this up since buying it. I got it from book of the month, obviously. Yeah, I think I'm gonna forego this one too. Dictionary of Lost Words I do still wanna read. It's just one that like, I'm definitely gonna have to be in the mood for it or pick it up for like a specific reason, but I do want to read it. So I think I will leave it on my shelves. So this is my nonfiction shelf. I do have an interest in all of these books. I think I may give up on Elizabeth just because this thing is huge and I can't find the audiobook anywhere. And I do like reading my nonfiction books on audio if I'm not annotating them and I just don't think I would annotate a biography. Thankfully I got this for free from a friend of my parents who was like clearing out her library. I don't think I'm actually ever gonna read it if I'm being honest with myself. Uh, the rest of these I do think 
I still have an interest in though. And please ignore this Topa Chica box, a little place for Sam to hide in so that he won't mess with my books. <laughs> okay, and then onto my mystery shelf. This is actually a book that I stole from my dad, so I can't get rid of that. I do eventually want to read all of the Sherlock Holmes stories, but haven't gotten to that yet. That is probably going to be like a year long project I end up taking on. I think. I'm gonna go ahead and Ixnay Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Penborough. I bought this from a friend of a friend for like super cheap along with a bunch of other books. Honestly, since buying it, I've heard like nothing but negative things on it. And I do believe it is a domestic thriller where we're following a woman who ends up having an affair with a man and then like befriending his wife or something. And I, that honestly just doesn't really interest me anymore. I initially picked it up because I recognized the title. Yeah, I, I can give up on that. I'm not gonna get rid of this just yet, but. But I honestly might end up getting rid of my book of the month copy of Murder Road, seeing as how I do have a Evernight copy, which is much prettier. Beautiful sprayed edges. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna read the book first before deciding on if I wanna get rid of No, honestly, I, I think I can go ahead and get rid of this one. <laughs> Listen for the lines of recent acquisition. Basically counts as a souvenir, so I'm not gonna get rid of it. Mary, I still want to read, hopefully here soon. This I got from my boyfriend's grandmother. Really cool cover. I do want to read this. I'm just, I have no idea. I need, I'm probably gonna need to force a reason on this one. This is an art. Thursday Murder Club, I do still wanna get to. Dark Places, I want to read all of Gillian Flynn's work, honestly. Hi, Sam. I haven't gone to that yet. Magpie Murders, I've heard a lot of positive things on, so I do want to read that. And then this is just a uh, map of Ohio with a lot of like weird and cool places marked. And then lastly is my horror shelf. And I'm going to be honest, probably everything on this is going to stay because I do have an interest in all these books. And most of them I got relatively recently. So I do think these are all going to stay on the shelf. And then this is the rest of my fantasies. I still absolutely have interest in both these. These come from Five Star Authors. It's a new book. Uh, this was a gift that I do want to read. Actually, I might add this to my June TBR hopefuls. Five Star Author, do still have an interest in, definitely have an interest in. This will be for a video later this year. <sighs> Magic Lessons. Honestly, I keep going back and forth on this because it is technically like the first most book in the Practical Magic series, a prequel to Practical Magic, and then this is a prequel to the prequel. I tried reading this, as you can see, but I didn't get very far and I just haven't really had an urge to pick it up since then. I bought it hoping that would make me finally continue the series, but it, it actually hasn't. And honestly, like looking at it on my shelves just kind of aggravates me. This wasn't going in a direction I was super hopeful for. It's not something I love to read about. I think I'm gonna give up on this one. Another five-star author, definitely going to be reading these some point. This is gonna be another project probably. And that is also gonna be a project because it is so freaking long, but I want to read it. That is it for my current own TBR. Let's dive into my digital TBR. Okay, so obviously we're on my Goodreads want to read list. Was doing really great about prioritizing StoryGraph over Goodreads last time I filmed one of these, but unfortunately I have sort of fallen off that bandwagon. I really need to be better about prioritizing my StoryGraph first, but I'm just so used to Goodreads. It, it's like a habit that I just can't break. Anyway, so at the top, Part of me wants to get rid of the strange and beautiful sorrows of Ava Lavender, partially because it's a book that I know is gonna make me cry and I don't really pick those up a ton, but also excluding that, it's a magical realism young adult story, but the real focus of the story is very contemporary. And I don't really, I don't really pick those up much anymore. I like that it has magical realism to it, but I don't know if that's enough to make me want to keep this on my TBR. Uh, let's let's see what, how my friends felt about this. Hannah gave it five stars, which is rough because honestly, most of the books she loves, I also love. So did Haley, Rachel, oh, Crystal gave it two stars. Got a one star, another two star from Chelsea, two stars. I don't know, I'll put that off to the side for right now. Nora and Kettle, I think this, yes, this is a Peter Pan retelling. That's a historical fiction way. I don't really ever read historical fiction though, honestly. I think I can remove that from my shelves and it won't hurt too much. Even though I do like fairy tale retellings, I don't read a lot of historical fiction, let alone YA historical fiction. Faithful Place by Dublin Murder Squad. Honestly, I'm just gonna kick that one off because 
It's been years since I touched this series and I've not felt a ton of pull towards it. I haven't felt a lot of pull towards mysteries in general lately, let alone ones that are as long and slow as uh, Tana French's. Uh, Dirty Job by Christopher Moore. I think this one was on my TBR because it's reminiscent to the Charlie Davidson series, which is my favorite series. Five star, two four stars, and one three star. I think I'm gonna keep that one. I'm still intrigued by it. Scythe though, yeah, I'm gonna ixnay this one. It's dystopian. And even though I keep telling myself, everybody loves this book and had so many things to say about it. I still haven't picked it up and it's been years now because it's a dystopian and that's just a genre of stories I don't really have an interest in. I <laughs> have a bunch of YA fantasies it looks like. Astonishing Color of After is one that kind of falls in the same circumstance of Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender. Sad YA contemporary. I've heard so many positive things about it, but it's just not something that really, really pulls me in very much. I don't know, I'll leave this on the maybe. <laughs> Suggested Reading by Dave Connis. I don't remember. Young Adult Contemporary. Way to fight back when her school bans dozen of classics and meaningful books. A topic I am a big proponent on. Absolutely want to push back against book banning. However, do I really want to read a YA fantasy story about it? I, I don't think so, honestly. I think I can say that one. The Truth About Keeping Secrets by Savannah Brown. I have no idea what this is. It is a young adult mystery, it looks like. Mm, not really standing out here from the description. Though it does have some positive reviews. I don't know, I just, nah, no, I think I'm gonna explain that one too. Female of the Species, I believe is another YA contemporary. And this one does have some harder hitting topics, but I think it's more like around feminism and less grief, like the prior two I've mentioned. So I do think I'm gonna leave that one be. Um, it's more YA fantasy. Uh, the Book Thief by Marcus Suzak. Honestly, I think I'm just gonna explain this. YA historical, I know what the story's about, a big hit, but I've really never felt a pull. I think it was only on here because I'm susceptible to other people's influence. <laughs> Fury Born by Claire Legrand. Honestly, my friend Allie liked this one, but after hearing Ray's rant reviews on this series, I think I'm gonna ixnay it. And I, d I don't even think Allie ended up liking the series on the whole, or maybe she just didn't like how it ended. One way or another, I'm you can get rid of that. Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng is like a contemporary with a sort of mystery to it, but honestly, I, I just think I'm gonna get rid of it. I don't really see myself ever picking that up. The Oracle Code and Gotham High. These are both really easy graphic novels that are just based off of DC Comics. I'm intrigued by them, but I've had them on my TBR for years and I really don't know if I'm actually gonna read them because why read these graphic novel retellings when I could just read the actual comic? <laughs> uh, yeah. I think I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna get rid of those. These three classics are all here because I read The Extraordinary Adventures of the Athena Club, and these were the three classics that had influence in that series that I hadn't read. <laughs> I have a few YA mysteries here. I like part of me wants to knock off, but I do still enjoy a YA mystery anytime I pick them up. I just have a lot higher threshold for my suspension of disbelief when it comes to them. I think I'll leave those be. Comics will break your heart. I think I added this to my TBR purely because of the title, if I'm being honest, but it's a YA romance and that just, nah, it's not really doing anything for me anymore. The Other Americans by Lila Lalami. I think I might have had this on a TBR years ago, but it's like a literary thriller that just doesn't interest me. Anger is a gift. I think this also falls into the same situation of sad YA contemporary. You know, hard hitting topics. I love hearing those. I love seeing them in YA stories, but I just don't really, I don't want to read them. That's three of them in a row, honestly. I, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and explain these from my shelves. I just don't think I'm gonna read them. Why, why bother having them on the list if they're never gonna get read? Well, we just got rid of this one so I can explain that. You're Welcome Universe by Whitney Gardner. Kinda does the same thing with YA Contemporary. The reason this one has survived on my list for so long is because it has a main character who is deaf and that's not something I see in stories very often. So I wanted to read it, but I also think the only way I've ever been able to find it is in ebook format, which is my least read format. So I think, unfortunately, I'm officially gonna knock that one off. Bunch of YA fantasies here. Magicians by Love Grosman. I think I added this because of a TV show, maybe? 
and I'm like, I wanted to watch the TV show, but I wanted to read the books first, and now I don't really have an interest in either, so I'm gonna get rid of that. Loveless by Alice Osman. I love the idea of this book, a young adult figuring herself out, but I don't really think it's something I'm ever gonna read. Got a bunch of mysteries, so like, part of me wants to ixnay them, but part of me doesn't. <laughs> The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This has had a resurgence lately, and I am intrigued by this author's work, but I'm also a little nervous because like the Inheritance Games get such mixed reviews. And the idea of The Naturals is very interesting, but it also sounds so similar to None Shall Sleep by Ellie Marnie, which I really enjoyed. Meaning I'm like concerned if I try to read it, I'll be comparing the two constantly, but for the time being, I guess I'll leave it be. Bunch more mysteries. The Comeback by Ella Berman. I don't remember what this is. A adult contemporary. A deep dive into the psyche of a young actress raised in the spotlight under the influence of charming, manipulative film director. I like the idea of this book. I just don't think I'll ever actually pick it up. Once upon a time, I used to read more literary fiction. It is very rare that I ever do now. And if I do, it tends to be more feel good stuff. The Name of the Star by Maureen Johnson. I'm 89% sure this is a uncompleted series that the author hasn't gone back to in quite some time. Yeah, I think this is the one. I'm gonna knock this one off. I don't want to read a series and get invested in it just for the author to never finish. Uh, Black Canary Breaking Silence. I've tried to read a lot of these DC novelizations, uh, especially the young adult ones, which I love the idea of by like grabbing people who are novel readers and maybe kind of slowly getting them interested in comics. And Black Canary is a character that I really enjoy, but I just don't really see myself ever reading this kind of same situation with those DC graphic novels I mentioned earlier. Got some very questionable looking nonfictions on here. Aristotle and Dante dive into the waters of the world. Honestly, I liked the first book in this, but I think I would have liked it a lot more if I read it when I was younger. And I, I don't really wanna read a 500 page book that's just gonna be a repeat of the first from what I understand. So I'm gonna get rid of that one too. A whole slew of romance books. A Perfect Murders by Peter Swanson. I do think I'm gonna ixnay because I believe all of those eight murders that are considered perfect were spoiled in this book. <laughs> I don't really wanna spoil those for myself. Hopeless Romantic by Marina Adar. I don't remember what this is. I guess it Contemporary romance. Okay, cool. Leave that be. The last story of Mina Lee. Yeah, this is another contemporary fiction that I just don't really ever see myself picking up, so cut it. You'll Be the Death of Me by Karen and McManus. I used to love this author's work, but honestly, I've felt no pull towards this one, so I think I think I can cross it off without too much heartbreak. A Listen in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. I've heard like only negative things about this, so also gonna get rid of it. In My Dreams, I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. I'm also going to get rid of that one because I wasn't a fan of the prior book I read by this author and honestly the buzzwords for this book just don't interest me at all. So Last House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. I tried to see if I went against the grain when it came to Survive the Night and I didn't so I'm going to listen to everybody else's reviews here and just not even bother. <laughs> My guess is I added The Restless Truth because of like a giveaway or something, but I honestly try not to add sequels to my TBR until I've read the first book, so I'm gonna go ahead. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that one off. Bronze Drum, we just got rid of that one. Nothing More to Tell, same situation. Another Karen M. McManus that I've just had no interest in, apart from the fact that she wrote it, but since I've been pulling away from mysteries, I really haven't wanted to pick it up. Five Survived by Holly Jackson honestly sounds like a repeat of Oh god, I'm not gonna think of it. I'll insert the photo of the book I'm trying to remember. I think it was by Natalie D. Richards, and I didn't really care for that book. I don't think the fact that Holly Jackson wrote this is really gonna change my opinion or my interest here, like it might have for some people. Little Thieves, I'm so nervous to try now because Ray really liked the first book, and then I think she ended up DNFing the second one or really hating it. But the idea of a goose girl retelling is interesting to me. It's not a fairy tale that I feel like gets a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. I don't know. A lot of these are relatively recent ads, so I feel more confident that I still have interest in them. My Darling Girl by Jennifer McMahon, though. I do think I can ixnay. I'm pretty sure I added that when I was considering getting it for Book of the Month, but then I didn't end up getting it from Book of the Month, so 
I'm not gonna leave it on there. When Women Were Dragons is a interesting title, but I've had the opportunity to read this with multiple different book clubs now and never actually read it, so clearly I'm not that driven towards it. And Warrior Girl Unearthed by Angeline Bully, I I liked the first book in this series, The Firekeeper's Daughter, but not so much that I want to read another one, especially one that's really gotten mid reviews from what I've seen. As I said, a lot of these are more recent ads, so I still feel fairly confident that I want to read them. There was another situation of me entering a giveaway and so it got added to my TBR, but it's later on in the series, so I, I don't like having those on here. There's a a second one also by Chloe Lise. I've entered a lot of giveaways for Chloe Lise's books, but the last time I tried to read one of hers, it didn't go well for me, though it was the sixth in the series, even if they are companion novels. I think I will like it more if I actually try and read the series in order. The prospects I can remove from my to read because I already read that, just a different version. Ooh, gonna ixnay this book by Frida's Moon, seeing as how it was recently revealed that that they were faking being biracial, which is pretty messed up. I just now remembered you can do this batch edit where you can like check mark stuff to delete it all in one go. Forgot about that. So we can delete that one, and this one, this one, this one. If he had been with me by Laura Nolan, this looks like some Tumblr age romance that I don't think I'll actually read, so I can get rid of that. Emily Wilde's? No, absolutely not on my TBR anymore. Okay, after some technical difficulties, we are back up and running, and I've just realized this book does not need to be listed as to read because I've already read it. And I'm trying to find where we were in the list. <laughs> okay, here we go. I think this is about where I was. Okay, so we can ixnay another one that's a later edition in the series. I think this is the second version of the Gilded Ones because I know I've seen it on this list already and the pairing because I just it's literally just saw it. Another last book in the series. Uh, this can also get removed because I've already read this book. I don't know why it's on here. Oh, there's a duplicate right there. Another one that I've already read. Okay, that's another duplicate that's a few apart, I can see that. Another duplicate. Yeah, these are like all super, super recent, have been added. So I doubt I'll be deleting anything from here. So on that note, I didn't think to check what was our starting number, but our ending number is 571 on my want to read list on Goodreads. So we definitely did a fair amount of deleting, but thankfully I finally cleared off a few of these books that just don't really interest me anymore. I don't do this very often just because, like I said, I don't like getting rid of books or removing books from my list without having actually read them, but my tastes change and so it's not unrealistic to actually do that. All right, and on that note, that is it for today, y'all. Thank you so much for coming to my channel. I really appreciate it. Make sure to hit like and subscribe down below. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, leave me a computer emoji in the comments down below. I have all my socials as well as a few ways you can support me linked in the description. I come out with videos on Monday and Friday, but until then, I hope you continue to have a terrific day. Love you, bye!